Welcome back to another Raspberry Pi tutorial. In this one, I'm turning a Raspberry Pi into an Ubuntu running machine. I'm going to show you three options, turning it into an Ubuntu server, an Ubuntu desktop, and then installing an Ubuntu version of a light desktop. Let's get right to it. On Ubuntu's website, they've actually made a page for this detailing all the options. So you got the desktop 64-bit, and you can only do this on the newer Pis. Ubuntu server 64-bit or 32-bit, and you can do this on most of the Pis. Notice the Pi 2 is 32-bit, and same with the 02, it's 32-bit only. First off, what's the difference between server and Ubuntu desktop? Server, in this case, means you're never going to use the display. Maybe you'll have a very primitive display just to help you with setup, but you're not going to have a nice graphical desktop or interface at all. It's mostly going to be remote access through the terminal. Finally, we have Ubuntu Core, which is their IoT operating system. I'm not going to download off of the Ubuntu page though. I'm going to be using the Raspberry Pi OS Imager. It works very well and is what I use for most of my Raspberry Pi operating system needs. I already have the Windows one installed. You can download the Mac or Ubuntu one if you'd like. It looks like this. Before moving on, what do we need for this project? If you're just doing an Ubuntu server, then all you need is the Raspberry Pi, a micro SD card, a power source, and then an internet connection. But if you want to install the desktop, I'm not sure there's a way to install desktop without a computer monitor and keyboard. So you're going to need some kind of HDMI connection. In the case of the 4B, it's a micro HDMI going into a monitor with a mouse and keyboard. All right, so I'm gonna plug my micro SD into my computer. Let's do the server version first. So choose the OS, scroll down to other general purpose OS, Ubuntu, and then Ubuntu server. And now just double check that you're getting one that's right for your Raspberry Pi. In this case, I have a Pi 2 with me and a Pi 4 with me. I'm just gonna do this on the Pi 4 because the 4 has Wi-Fi installed. Click that. Now click my storage. And that's the micro SD I just inserted. Make sure you're not formatting some like important drive of yours. And then click write. This will take about eight minutes. And let's delete everything. All right, all written. I'm gonna click continue and replug in my micro SD card. And now open up the file explorer to wherever that micro SD card is. In this case, mine's the D drive. And you got all the system boot files. Scroll down to the one that says network config. Open that. And it's gonna look like this with lots of comments. Basically, I'm just gonna put in my Wi-Fi information here and uncomment out everything up to here. All right, and now my home Wi-Fi network. Make sure you keep the indentation appropriate and also put your network name in quotes. And then your password here. Save that, and then let's put it in the Pi. Grab the SD card, putting it in my Pi, powering on and give it a couple minutes to get everything set up. The next step is finding the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. So there are a couple ways to do that. One is to log into your router and see attached devices, and the other is using these commands that Ubuntu provides to us. So if you're on a Unix or a Linux-based machine, you can try these two options, which searches for the MAC address. And then the Windows, it's these options. I'm on Windows, so I'm going to be running these two commands. I do know that I'm running a Raspberry Pi 4, so I'm just going to do this command here. Open up my command prompt. Enter. Boom, right there, we got my IP address. And it is a dynamic IP address. You can choose to set that as static if you'd like in your router settings, but right now, dynamic is fine for me. So there's my IP address, and let's SSH into it. Just note, 
the default username and password for this Ubuntu server is Ubuntu for the username and Ubuntu for the password. So I'm going to do SSH 192.168.1.6. That's my IP, but first I have to do Ubuntu at enter. Yes, authorize. Password Ubuntu. I now I have to change my password immediately, so I'm gonna just do something easy. Oh, current password, that's what I did, I typed it wrong. New password, retype the password. All right, and now password updated successfully. Let's re-SSH into it, put in that new password, and we're in. Let's check our OS, cat etc os-release. Enter, and it looks like we are running Ubuntu 21.10. Server, check. Now, let's install a light desktop. To do the light desktop, we're gonna follow this entire server process, and then in the command line, install the light desktop. You have a couple options for the light desktop, Lubuntu or Zubuntu. I'm going to be doing Lubuntu. This will be good for people who have a 32-bit operating system or maybe a four that doesn't have more than four gigabytes of RAM. In my case, I only have two gigabytes of RAM and my 64 gigabyte Ubuntu full desktop glitches out a bit, as you'll see later in the video. So to install Lubuntu, it's just sudo apt install lubuntu-desktop. And then if you want to do Zubuntu, then it's Zubuntu-desktop. Enter. All right, it looks like I have multiple display managers. Got to figure out how to manage that. Enter. Okay, so this is GNOME versus Plasma, I think. And I heard that SDDM is a bit smoother of an experience, so I'm going to pick that. All right, all installed, and now I think all we have to do is restart the Pi and have it plugged into the HDMI monitor. Okay, I had to figure some things out, but now we got it working. Just power up the Pi and I'll show you. Great, and once you see this right here, finished, the cloud in it, finished, now we have to get into our terminal. So that's Control-Alt-F2 log in with those username and password you set earlier and this brings you to a terminal and all you have to do now to get into your Lubuntu desktop is type the command start X there we go and let's check to see settings scroll down to the about and there we go. We're running Ubuntu in the Lubuntu flavor. Finally, let's set up a normal full desktop 64-bit Ubuntu on the Raspberry Pi 4B. Same deal as setting up the server. First, we're going to go into our Raspberry Pi imager, plug my micro SD card into the reader. I'm going to choose that micro SD card. Make sure you pick the right one. I'm going to change the operating system to Ubuntu 64-bit right there and click right. This takes me about 15 minutes. Device has been written, so now I'm going to remove the micro SD card, plug it into the Raspberry Pi, also plug in the monitor, and we'll see what happens. Just note, my 4B does not have 4 gigabytes of memory, so this isn't recommended for me, and there are some glitches, but I just want to show you that this works. Good sign, good sign. Awesome, let's configure the system. English, English keyboard. I don't care to connect to Wi-Fi. And I'm on the east coast of the United States. Awesome, let's log in automatically. SS password. Continue. And now give it a little bit to configure and we'll be good to go. Look at that. Now for me, what happens is I can't use my keyboard and that's due to not having enough RAM. 
but I can still show you that I have successfully installed the proper version of Ubuntu. Bada boom, right there, 64-bit Ubuntu 21.10. And that's all there is to it. It's a little complicated, doesn't work on every device, but that's expected when you're doing something out of the norm. If you have any other future videos you'd like me to make, let me know in the comments. Also ask any questions and I'll try to get back to them. Like the video and subscribe as encouragement for me and also to show the YouTube algorithm that this has been helpful for you. And thanks for watching.